So I'm going to whip through some background slides fairly quickly so I can get to the, to the technical bits that I like, um, which probably won't amuse some people, but anyway, here we go. So Australia has this tremendous opportunity for capturing renewable energy in a number of forms. We have a huge wave resource, tremendous wind resource, some tidal and where it's good, it's good, and of course solar everywhere across the north of, north of the country, not only in within the continent, but, but at sea around the continent as well. And so we have an awful lot to work with. Oops. Okay. Uh, so research program three uh, is about, on the left, th this is a kind of a working definition of what we do. So research program three in Blue Economy CRC is first of all about capturing energy on the left, managing that energy in the middle, and then delivering the energy on the right. And the bit I want to draw attention to are the, green, the, the, the red stars, uh, which are about green hydrogen. So we, uh, working from the left, use hydrogen to generate electricity in a fuel cell or a, a hydrogen turbine. Uh, the next green star across production of hydrogen from green electricity. And that involves all sorts of things. It involves water, it involves oxygen, it involves heat. These things are never simple. We may need hydrogen storage. We may need it for short term or long term, just as we need charge storage in the form of batteries. And then on the right hand side, delivering energy. And uh, one of those is, is hydrogen for transport, including, we hope, vessels. So some hydrogen related research objectives um, uh, and training objectives as well. Uh, these are very much in line with what the CRC does. And the only thing I want to do, I'm not going to read this, but what I want to do is to point out to you that these are not all technical objectives. There's a lot of non-technical objectives here. So we have to embrace the whole problem. It has many aspects, and that includes uh, the aspect of social license, supply chain difficulties, guarantee of origin, all manner of things, not just technical stuff, although I will talk mainly about that. In Research Program 3, we started off on the top line there, working out what we were going to do, scoping things, finding out what the problems are, how we might address some of those problems. Um, the bottom line there is projects are underway, and um, they're about doing things, building things, putting things in place, putting to use what we learned in the original scoping projects that have all been completed. Opportunities, uh, aquaculture, of course, is one. There's a common thread here in the need for clean power, but there are other things as well, like oxygen. Uh, production of oxygen goes with the production of hydrogen by electrolysis. Uh, remote communities of all sorts, including in our context in the blue economy zone, again, the, the energy security issue, diesel displacement, not only from the point of view of carbon, but diesel at sea, if there's a, a spill, um, is a, a real problem. That, that, that's a very nasty event. Uh, vessels, we're going to hear a lot more about this, but this is a very uh, quick slide uh, about it. Um, large ships are probably going to be, as we've heard, some other fuel than hydrogen, but you never know. At the minute, there are ships on the books that will be hydrogen powered up to a bit above 20 megawatts, in fact. Um, the biggest fuel cell on order around the world at the minute, I believe, is low megawatts, so this is uh, something to watch. It's something the Blue Economy CRC is very actively engaged in. A lot of interest here. Okay, to get to the main thing I'm going to talk about, which is the demonstration project, um, there are all sorts of dem values of de for that demonstration projects have, which I'll come to when I talk about impact in just a minute. But um, these are in line, the, these objectives here are in, are in line with those that I pointed to in relation to research and training before. And again, they're not only technical, but they're based around the existence of a facility which is decidedly technical. It provides a kind of a scaffold on which you can hang many things. So this uh, demonstration project is going to be carried out in two phases. It is being carried out in two phases, the first of which is well underway now. And that's an onshore phase. We want to go offshore. We will go offshore within several years, but we have this initial learning phase which will be carried out onshore that I'll now talk about. And you can see the partners involved in this on the right. So what do we hope for, what do we intend uh, in the way of impact here? 
we, we would like to be lighting a path to decarbonisation in the blue economy zone, and that's a pretty big claim, and we're not going to be doing all of it. Um, but we're going to be doing something we think is important because, remember, we're capturing energy, we're managing energy, we're delivering energy, and that's what the decarbonisation issue is about in some context everywhere in the blue economy zone and everywhere else. Um, some of what we're doing uh, is uh, what is now called digital twins, used to be called all sorts of other things, and that's a means by which we can actually do research uh, but it's also a means by which we can show people what we're doing. And when you show people, you generate understanding of what you're doing, and that generates advocacy for what you're doing. And in this case, I'm talking about hydrogen energy. That involves developing a whole lot of software tools for modelling energy systems, particularly, uh, particularly those uh, based around hydrogen. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we will have a tangible facility on the ground before we have one in the water and that is on an industrial site, but, it, but it's there and it will be available to be visited um, either in person or uh, online through the digital twin. So we think that's going to be quite a, a valuable asset for technical education. Uh, we will be supplying the hydrogen for the Tasmanian government's fuel cell buses, so there's a kind of commercial imperative to what we do, which as John mentioned the other day, is going to help us reclaim some, some of the capex that's going into this. And uh, we're also uh, participating already in the Guarantee of Origin trial. And on the right here um, is a picture showing refueling a hydrogen fuel cell bus in Aberdeen. Now, Aberdeen, north of Scotland, um, has very nearly the same population as Hobart. Uh, and you can see that refueling a fuel cell bus just looks like refueling a bus. And it doesn't take or needn't take any longer. Doesn't happen with electric buses, battery electric buses. Takes longer. There's an associated research project which wraps a research context around this demonstration project. And uh, I mentioned the scaffold thing before. This is a kind of a scaffold for all sorts of research projects which may come from other areas, including social license, guarantee of origin, so on. Um, safety, risk, very important matters when, any th when, when hydrogen is involved, of course. On the right is a picture of the electrolyzer that's going to be landing within the next couple of months, we hope. It's just um, undergone its final acceptance testing of the stack, so that's almost on its way to us at long last. And uh, importantly, there'll be a lot of learning by doing here, so there'll be a lot of transfer of learnings from carrying out the demonstration project into the design of the, uh, the offshore uh, microgrid that's actually going in the water somewhere within a few years. The microgrid looks like this. I did threaten you with it being a technical <laughs> presentation, and here we go. Um, I won't go into this in detail, but there's, there's a microgrid there, th the green bits, that's just copper bus bars, connecting things, okay. And we have PV coming in, um, we have hydrogen being produced in the electrolyzer, some of that's going off in a tube trailer to the right to the buses, some of it's going to a turbine, um, we have a battery connected, and importantly, we can emulate things like wave or wind, and we can emulate loads that might be an island, community, or, else, or anything like that. Offshore phase, very ill-defined as yet. It's just a, uh, in a sense, a more complicated version of what's onshore, and um, we expect that that will be associated with an aquaculture facility, um, and uh, we hope that there will be some hydrogen power vessels associated with that as well. Uh, and I'll just briefly mention this. When we come to do that, we need to store hydrogen. So the, hy the H2 bus there isn't a, isn't a bus on wheels. It's, it's, it's the bus bar for hydrogen. It's a big pipe. So we need storage. How do we do that? And we have options, and this, this kind of points to the complexity of trying to do this. We have all manner of options to be, to be weighed here in how we store the hydrogen. High pressure, low pressure, um, you know, liquid, gaseous, solid form, uh, my favourite because I do research on it. And um, just very swiftly, now this is my last slide, here we have two options. The top option on the right and the bottom option on the right store the same amount of hydrogen essentially in the same footprint. And uh, the top one is very heavy, is metal hydride, but it's low pressure, so it's really safe. The bottom one is 500 bar, which is high-ish pressure depending on how you think of it, 
um, and it's considerably lighter, and they have their own individual advantages and disadvantages that are going to be need going to need to be weighed up when we come to design this thing. So this is a kind of a representation of just how complex it is to do this. It's not a it's not an engineering lay down mazer. We, we have we have to think about the whole picture, try and optimize the whole thing at the design stage before it goes uh, anywhere near the water. So I'm sure I'm out of time. Thank you. <laughs>